Head and Neck Cancer, Wikipedia Audio Head and Neck Cancer is a group of cancers that starts within the mouth, nose, throat, larynx, sinuses, or salivary glands. Symptoms may include a lump or sore that does not heal, a sore throat that does not go away, trouble swallowing, or a change in the voice. There may also be unusual bleeding, facial swelling, or trouble breathing. About 75% of head and neck cancer is due to the use of alcohol or tobacco. Other risk factors include beetle quid, certain types of human papillomavirus, radiation exposure, certain workplace exposures, and Epstein-Barr virus. Head and neck cancers are most commonly of the squamous cell carcinoma type. The diagnosis is confirmed by tissue biopsy. The degree of spread may be determined by medical imaging and blood tests. Not using tobacco or alcohol can reduce the risk. While screening in the general population does not appear to be useful, Screening high-risk groups by examination of the throat might be useful. Often, head and neck cancer is curable if detected early, however, outcomes are typically poor if detected late. Treatment may include a combination of surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, and targeted therapy. Following treatment of one head and neck cancer people are at higher risk of a second cancer. Signs and Symptoms In 2015, head and neck cancers globally affected more than 5.5 million people and resulted in more than 379,000 deaths. Together they are the seventh most frequent cancer and the ninth most frequent cause of death from cancer. In the United States about 1% of people are affected at some point in their life and males are affected twice as often as females. The usual age at diagnosis is between 55 and 65 years. The average 5-year survival following diagnosis in the developed world is 42 to 64%. Throat cancer usually begins with symptoms that seem harmless enough like an enlarged lymph node on the outside of the neck, a sore throat or a hoarse sounding voice. However, in the case of throat cancer, these conditions may persist and become chronic. There may be a lump or a sore in the throat or neck that does not heal or go away. There may be difficult or painful swallowing. Speaking may become difficult. There may be a persistent earache. Other possible but less common symptoms include some numbness or paralysis of the face muscles. Maxillectomy, mandibulectomy, glossectomy, radical neck dissection, Mohs procedure, combinational e.g., glossectomy and laryngectomy done together. Presenting symptoms include Squamous cell cancers are common in the mouth including the inner lip, tongue, floor of mouth, gingivae, and hard palate. Cancers of the mouth are strongly associated with tobacco use, especially use of chewing tobacco or dip, as well as heavy alcohol use. Cancers of this region, particularly the tongue, are more frequently treated with surgery than are other head and neck cancers. Surgeries for oral cancers include The defect is typically covered slash improved by using another part of the body and slash or skin grafts and slash or wearing a prosthesis. Nasopharyngeal cancer arises in the nasopharynx, the region in which the nasal cavities and the eustachian tubes connect with the upper part of the throat. While some nasopharyngeal cancers are biologically similar to the common HNSCC, poorly differentiated nasopharyngeal carcinoma is lymphoepithelioma, which is distinct in its epidemiology, biology, clinical behavior, and treatment, and is treated as a separate disease by many experts.
In 2008, there were 22,900 cases of oral cavity cancer, 12,250 cases of laryngeal cancer, and 12,410 cases of pharyngeal cancer in the United States. In 2002, 7,400 Americans were projected to die of these cancers. More than 70% of throat cancers are at an advanced stage when discovered. Men are 89% more likely than women to be diagnosed with, and are almost twice as likely to die of, these cancers. African Americans are disproportionately affected by head and neck cancer, with younger ages of incidence, increased mortality, and more advanced disease at presentation. Laryngeal cancer incidence is higher in African Americans relative to white, Asian and Hispanic populations. There is a lower survival rate for similar tumor states in African Americans with head and neck cancer. Smoking and tobacco use are directly related to oropharyngeal cancer deaths. Head and neck cancer increases with age, especially after 50 years. Most people are between 50 and 70 years old. Oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinomas begins in the oropharynx, the middle part of the throat that includes the soft palate, the base of the tongue, and the tonsils. Squamous cell cancers of the tonsils are more strongly associated with human papillomavirus infection than are cancers of other regions of the head and neck. HPV-positive oropharyngeal cancer generally has a better outcomes than HPV-negative disease with a 54% better survival, but this advantage for HPV-associated cancer applies only to oropharyngeal cancers. People with oropharyngeal carcinomas are at high risk of developing second primary head and neck cancer. Mouth the hypopharynx includes the piriform sinuses, the posterior pharyngeal wall, and the postcricoid area. Tumors of the hypopharynx frequently have an advanced stage at diagnosis, and have the most adverse prognosis of pharyngeal tumors. They tend to metastasize early due to the extensive lymphatic network around the larynx. Laryngeal cancer begins in the larynx or voice box. Cancer may occur on the vocal folds themselves, or on tissues above and below the true cords. Laryngeal cancer is strongly associated with tobacco smoking. Surgery can include laser excision of small vocal cord lesions, partial laryngectomy, or total laryngectomy. If the whole larynx has been removed the person is left with a permanent tracheostomy. Voice rehabilitation in such patients can be achieved through three important ways esophageal speech, tracheosophageal puncture or electrolarynx. One would likely require the help of intensive teaching and speech therapy and slash or an electronic device. Cancer of the trachea is a rare cancer which can be similar to head and neck cancer, and is sometimes classified as such. Most tumors of the salivary glands differ from the common carcinomas of the head and neck in cause, histopathology, clinical presentation, and therapy. Other uncommon tumors arising in the head and neck include teratomas, adenocarcinomas, adenoid cystic carcinomas, and mucoepidermoid carcinomas. Rarer still are melanomas and lymphomas of the upper aerodigestive tract. Around 75% of cases are caused by alcohol and tobacco use. Tobacco smoke is one of the main risk factors for head and neck cancer and one of the most carcinogenic compounds in tobacco smoke is acrylonitrile. Acrylonitrile appears to indirectly cause DNA damage by increasing oxidative stress, leading to increased levels of 8-oxo-2-deoxyguanosine and formamidopyrimidine in DNA. Both 8-oxo-DG and formamidopyrimidine are mutagenic. 
DNA glycosylase NEIL1 prevents mutagenesis by 8-oxo-DG and removes formamidopyrimidines from DNA. Nasopharynx Throat However, cigarette smokers have a lifetime increased risk for head and neck cancers that is 5 to 25 fold increased over the general population. The ex-smoker's risk for squamous cell cancer of the head and neck begins to approach the risk in the general population 20 years after smoking cessation. The high prevalence of tobacco and alcohol use worldwide and the high association of these cancers with these substances makes them ideal targets for enhanced cancer prevention. Hypopharynx Larynx Trachea Causes Alcohol and Tobacco Smokeless tobacco is cause of oral and pharyngeal cancers. Cigar smoking is an important risk factor for oral cancers as well. Other environmental carcinogens suspected of being potential causes of head and neck cancer include occupational exposures such as nickel refining, exposure to textile fibers, and woodworking. Use of marijuana, especially while younger, is linked to an increase in squamous cell carcinoma cases while other studies suggest use is not shown to be associated with oral squamous cell carcinoma, or associated with decreased squamous cell carcinoma. Excessive consumption of processed meats and red meat were associated with increased rates of cancer of the head and neck in one study while consumption of raw and cooked vegetables seemed to be protective. Diet Vitamin E was not found to prevent the development of leukoplakia, the white plagues that are the precursor for carcinomas of the mucosal surfaces, in adult smokers. Another study examined a combination of vitamin E and beta-carotene in smokers with early-stage cancer of the oropharynx and found a worse prognosis in the vitamin users. Beetle nut chewing is associated with an increased risk of squamous cell cancer of the head and neck. Some head and neck cancers are caused by human papillomavirus. In particular HPV-16, is a causal factor for some head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. Approximately 15 to 25 percent of HNSCC contain genomic DNA from HPV, and the association varies based on the site of the tumor, especially HPV-positive oropharyngeal cancer, with highest distribution in the tonsils, where HPV DNA is found in of the cases, less often in the hypopharynx, and least often in the oral cavity and larynx. Some experts estimate that while up to 50% of cancers of the tonsil may be infected with HPV, only 50% of these are likely to be caused by HPV. The role of HPV in the remaining 25-30% to 30 is not yet clear. Oral sex is not risk-free and results in a significant proportion of HPV-related head and neck cancer. Positive HPV-16 status is associated with improved prognosis over HPV-negative OSCC. HPV can induce tumor by several mechanisms. Induction of cancer can be associated for the expression of viral oncoproteins, the most important E6 and E7, or other mechanisms many of them run by the integration such as the generation of altered transcripts disruption of tumor suppressors, high levels of DNA amplifications, interchromosomal rearrangements or changes in DNA methylation patterns, the latter being able to find even when the virus is identified in apisomes. E6 sequesters P53 to promote P53 degradation while PRB inhibits E7. P53 prevents cell growth when DNA is damaged by activating apoptosis and P21, 
a kinase that blocks the formation of cyclin D slash CDK4 avoiding PRB phosphorylation and thereby prevents release of E2F is a transcription factor required for activation of genes involved in cell proliferation. PRB remains bound to E2F while this action phosphorylated preventing activation of proliferation. Therefore, E6 and E7 act synergistically in triggering cell cycle progression and therefore uncontrolled proliferation by inactivating the P53 and RB tumor suppressors. Beetle nut Viral integration tends to occur in or near oncogenes or tumor suppressor genes and it is for this reason that the integration of the virus can greatly contribute to the development of tumor characteristics. Epstein Bar virus infection is associated with nasopharyngeal cancer. Nasopharyngeal cancer occurs endemically in some countries of the Mediterranean and Asia, where EBV antibody titers can be measured to screen high-risk populations. Nasopharyngeal cancer has also been associated with consumption of salted fish, which may contain high levels of nitrites. Infection The presence of acid reflux disease or larynx reflux disease can also be a major factor. Stomach acids that flow up through the esophagus can damage its lining and raise susceptibility to throat cancer. Patients after hematopoietic stem cell transplantation are at a higher risk for oral squamous cell carcinoma. Post-HSCT oral cancer may have more aggressive behavior with poorer prognosis, when compared to oral cancer in non-HSCT patients. This effect is supposed to be owing to the continuous lifelong immune suppression and chronic oral graft versus host disease. Human papillomavirus Epstein Bar virus Gastroesophageal reflux disease There are a wide variety of factors which can put someone at a heightened risk for throat cancer. Such factors include smoking or chewing tobacco or other things, such as gutka, or pawn, heavy alcohol consumption, poor diet resulting in vitamin deficiencies, weakened immune system, asbestos exposure prolonged exposure to wood dust or paint fumes, exposure to petroleum industry chemicals, and being over the age of 55 years. Another risk factor includes the appearance of white patches or spots in the mouth, known as leukoplakia, in about of the cases this develops into cancer. Other heightened risks, breathing or inhaling silica from cutting concrete, stone or cinder blocks, especially in enclosed areas such as a warehouse, garage, or basement. A person usually presents to the physician complaining of one or more of the above symptoms. The person will typically undergo a needle biopsy of this lesion, and a histopathologic information is available. A multidisciplinary discussion of the optimal treatment strategy will be undertaken between the radiation oncologist, surgical oncologist, and medical oncologist. Throat cancers are classified according to their histology or cell structure, and are commonly referred to by their location in the oral cavity and neck. This is because where the cancer appears in the throat affects the prognosis. Some throat cancers are more aggressive than others depending upon their location. The stage at which the cancer is diagnosed is also a critical factor in the prognosis of throat cancer. Treatment guidelines recommend routine testing for the presence of HPV for all oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma tumors. Squamous cell carcinoma is a cancer of the squamous cell. A kind of epithelial cell found in both the skin and mucous membranes. It accounts for over 90% of all head and neck cancers, including more than 90% of throat cancer. 
Squamous cell carcinoma is most likely to appear in males over 40 years of age with a history of heavy alcohol use coupled with smoking. The tumor marker Cifra 21 to 1 may be useful in diagnosing squamous cell carcinoma of the head slash neck. Adenocarcinoma is a cancer of epithelial tissue that has glandular characteristics. Several head and neck cancers are adenocarcinomas. Avoidance of recognized risk factors is the single most effective form of prevention. Regular dental examinations may identify precancerous lesions in the oral cavity. When diagnosed early, oral, head and neck cancers can be treated more easily and the chances of survival increase tremendously. As of 2017 it was not known if existing HPV vaccines can help prevent head and neck cancer. Improvements in diagnosis and local management, as well as targeted therapy, have led to improvements in quality of life and survival for people with head and neck cancer. After a histologic diagnosis has been established and tumor extent determined, the selection of appropriate treatment for a specific cancer depends on a complex array of variables, including tumor site, relative morbidity of various treatment options, concomitant health problems, social and logistic factors, previous primary tumors, and the person's preference. Treatment planning generally requires a multidisciplinary approach involving specialist surgeons and medical and radiation oncologists. Surgical resection and radiation therapy are the mainstays of treatment for most head and neck cancers and remain the standard of care in most cases. For small primary cancers without regional metastases, Wide surgical excision alone or curative radiation therapy alone is used. More extensive primary tumors, or those with regional metastases, planned combinations of pre- or post-operative radiation and complete surgical excision are generally used. More recently, as historical survival and control rates are recognized as less than satisfactory, there has been an emphasis on the use of various induction or concomitant chemotherapy regimens. Surgery as a treatment is frequently used in most types of head and neck cancer. Usually the goal is to remove the cancerous cells entirely. This can be particularly tricky if the cancer is near the larynx and can result in the person being unable to speak. Surgery is also commonly used to resect some or all of the cervical lymph nodes to prevent further spread of the disease. CO2 laser surgery is also another form of treatment. Transoral laser microsurgery allows surgeons to remove tumors from the voice box with no external incisions. It also allows access to tumors that are not reachable with robotic surgery. During the surgery, surgeon and pathologist work together to assess the adequacy of excision, minimizing the amount of normal tissue removed or damaged. This technique helps give the person as much speech and swallowing function as possible after surgery. Radiation therapy is the most common form of treatment. There are different forms of radiation therapy including 3D conformal radiation therapy, intensity modulated radiation therapy, particle beam therapy and brachytherapy, which are commonly used in the treatments of cancers of the head and neck. Most people with head and neck cancer who are treated in the United States and Europe are treated with intensity modulated radiation therapy using high energy photons. At higher doses, head and neck radiation is associated with thyroid dysfunction and pituitary axis dysfunction. Chemotherapy in throat cancer is not generally used to cure the cancer as such. Instead, it is used to provide an inhospitable environment for metastases so that they will not establish in other parts of the body. Typical chemotherapy agents are a combination of paclitaxel and carboplatin. 
Cetuximab is also used in the treatment of throat cancer. Docetaxel-based chemotherapy has shown a very good response in locally advanced head and neck cancer. Docetaxel is the only taxane approved by US FDA for head and neck cancer, in combination with cisplatin and fluorouracil for the induction treatment of inoperable, locally advanced squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck. While not specifically a chemotherapy, Amifostine is often administered intravenously by a chemotherapy clinic prior to IMRT radiotherapy sessions. Amifostine protects the gums and salivary glands from the effects of radiation. Photodynamic therapy may have promise in treating mucosal dysplasia and small head and neck tumors. Amphenex is giving good results in early clinical trials for treatment of advanced head and neck cancer. Targeted therapy, according to the National Cancer Institute, is a type of treatment that uses drugs or other substances, such as monoclonal antibodies, to identify and attack specific cancer cells without harming normal cells. Some targeted therapy used in squamous cell cancers of the head and neck include ketuximab, bevacizumab, and erlotinib. The best quality data are available for ketuximab since the 2006 publication of a randomized clinical trial comparing radiation treatment plus ketuximab versus radiation treatment alone. This study found that concurrent ketuximab and radiotherapy improves survival and loco-regional disease control compared to radiotherapy alone, without a substantial increase in side effects, as would be expected with the concurrent chemoradiotherapy, which is the current gold standard treatment for advanced head and neck cancer. Whilst this study is of pivotal significance, Interpretation is difficult since ketuximab radiotherapy was not directly compared to chemoradiotherapy. The results of ongoing studies to clarify the role of ketuximab in this disease are awaited with interest. Another study evaluated the impact of adding ketuximab to conventional chemotherapy versus cisplatin alone. This study found no improvement in survival or disease-free survival with the addition of ketuximab to the conventional chemotherapy. However, another study which completed in March 2007 found that there was an improvement in survival. A 2010 review concluded that the combination of ketuximab and platin 5 fluorouracil should be considered the current standard first-line regimen. Gendison is a gene therapy that employs an adenovirus to deliver the tumor suppressor gene P53 to cells. It was approved in China in 2003 for the treatment of head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. The mutational profile of HPV and an HPV head and neck cancer has been reported, further demonstrating that they are fundamentally distinct diseases. Although early-stage head and neck cancers have high cure rates, up to 50% of people with head and neck cancer present with advanced disease. Cure rates decrease in locally advanced cases, whose probability of cure is inversely related to tumor size and even more so to the extent of regional node involvement. Consensus panels in America and Europe have established staging systems for head and neck squamous cell cancers. These staging systems attempt to standardize clinical trial criteria for research studies, and attempt to define prognostic categories of disease. Squamous cell cancers of the head and neck are staged according to the TNM classification system, where T is the size and configuration of the tumor. N is the presence or absence of lymph node metastases, and M is the presence or absence of distant metastases. The T, N, and M characteristics are combined to produce a stage of the cancer, from I to IVB.
survival advantages provided by new treatment modalities have been undermined by the significant percentage of people cured of head and neck squamous cell carcinoma who subsequently develop second primary tumors. The incidence of second primary tumors ranges in studies from 9% to 23% at 20 years. Second primary tumors are the major threat to long-term survival after successful therapy of early-stage HNSCC. Their high incidence results from the same carcinogenic exposure responsible for the initial primary process, called field cancerization. As it can impair a person's ability to swallow and eat, throat cancer affects the digestive system. The difficulty in swallowing can lead to a person to choke on their food in the early stages of digestion and interfere with the food's smooth travels down into the esophagus and beyond. The treatments for throat cancer can also be harmful to the digestive system as well as other body systems. Radiation therapy can lead to nausea and vomiting, which can deprive a body of vital fluids. Frequent vomiting can lead to an electrolyte imbalance which has serious consequences for the proper functioning of the heart. Frequent vomiting can also upset the balance of stomach acids which has a negative impact on the digestive system, especially the lining of the stomach and esophagus. In the cases of some throat cancers, the air passages in the mouth and behind the nose may become blocked from lumps or the swelling from the open sores. If the throat cancer is near the bottom of the throat it has a high likelihood of spreading to the lungs and interfering with the person's ability to breathe, this is even more likely if the person is a smoker, because they are highly susceptible to lung cancer. Like any cancer, Metastasization affects many areas of the body, as the cancer spreads from cell to cell and organ to organ. For example, if it spreads to the bone marrow, it will prevent the body from producing enough red blood cells and affects the proper functioning of the white blood cells and the body's immune system, spreading to the circulatory system will prevent oxygen from being transported to all the cells of the body and throat cancer can throw the nervous system into chaos, making it unable to properly regulate and control the body. Depending on the treatment used, people with head and neck cancer may experience the following symptoms and treatment side effects. The number of new cases of head and neck cancers in the United States was 40,490 in 2006 accounting for about 3% of adult malignancies. 11,170 people died of their disease in 2006. The worldwide incidence exceeds half a million cases annually. In North America and Europe, the tumors usually arise from the oral cavity, oropharynx, or larynx, whereas nasopharyngeal cancer is more common in the Mediterranean countries and in the Far East. In Southeast China and Taiwan, head and neck cancer, specifically nasopharyngeal cancer is the most common cause of death in young men. Immunotherapy with immune checkpoint inhibitors is being investigated in head and neck cancers. Hematopoietic stem cell transplantation other possible causes Diagnosis Histopathology Squamous cell carcinoma Adenocarcinoma Prevention Management Surgery Radiation therapy Chemotherapy Photodynamic therapy Targeted therapy Prognosis Problem of second primaries Digestive system Respiratory system Others Treatment side effects Epidemiology Research <laughs>